What's going on guys? So we're back today at a cool job. We're in New Jersey City. Uh, we're doing this project for a collectibles uh, company. They sell baseball cards, memorabilia, anything that's collectors worthy, they sell. So this, this project is massive. It's 130,000 square feet, but our section of it is about 6,000. So this is a finished floor that we're gonna be putting down. So our floor will be the finished product with a sealer on top. We already did some some pre-pours, the floor was in rough shape prior to what we did here. Did a base layer to smooth everything out, uh, which basically ensures that the, the topic pour that we're gonna put on today goes on much, much smoother. This is an example of what it looked like. This was a, a good area, but you could just see all the different variations in, in height and existing floors, but everything is down, solid bonded really well so we're able we feel comfortable enough to, to go over it with the product we're going to be using and we're going to be doing this all in one pour it's a very wide span probably about 60 65 feet at its widest so we'll have two guys going together um, two guys with the smoothers two guys with the spreaders and and knocking this out in tandem we're also going down the elevator hallway um, and then working our way out of here so our finished pour is going to be stopping here we're not going inside this room. You can see the soffit up here. That's gonna be a boardroom or a conference room of some kind. So inside there is gonna be carpet. How we stop it is with this Schluter strip uh, or terrazzo divider strip. There's a bunch of names for it. So we set that in and that's exactly from corner to corner on one end to the other in a perfectly straight line. And that's gonna act as our pour stop that is gonna contain the self level in a perfectly straight line. And the Schluter strip here will be the decorative finish to, to finish it out real nice. You can see more here. This is more Schluter strip all across this span. So we're gonna stop the self level here and not have anything go on, on the other side of it. And, um, and that's how we're gonna keep it in a perfectly straight line, which is in the center line of all these columns. It's gonna crack. Basically, the beauty of these floors is that they're not a piece of ceramic tile, it's not a piece of porcelain tile, it's not a manufactured product. It's movement in the floor. Take this, the smoother, you smooth it out, and you're essentially pulling the water line back, which is this mark here. As you do that, you continue to walk back in the floor. But on this particular floor, they wanted more movement. So that's what we're doing. We're kind of manipulating the water and making some extra movement in the floor. As you can see, every time I go over it, it leaves different patterns in the floor. Instead of the standard just going like this, where that would be perfectly fine for carpet, vinyl, linoleum, whatever you want on top of it. For a finished floor, you kind of want to make it look a little artsy. Get in touch with your crafty side. The bane of our existence is little pieces of concrete that come out Something that makes people nervous when you're pouring elevator lobbies is the potential for the self-level to go down and into the elevators and cause a whole mess of problems. But that really was a nerve-wracking thing for us uh, before we came up with a pretty foolproof system, making everything watertight and waterproof. So we're cleaning up all the drip because we're not gonna be able to hit this area for about another 45 minutes or so. We don't want those drips to dry and not be primed, that can essentially create an air bubble on the finished surface. That's why we're cleaning them up as we go.
All right, so we finished up in the elevator hallway, moving into the next section where this is a skinny area, and we're gonna open up into the widest section where me and Luis are gonna have to split up and eventually, you know, go our separate ways. But for now, we're helping each other out, trying to marry all these transition strips is, you know, right up to the top, and just keep on moving as fast as we can. So this tool, the gauge rig, basically you have, you set your heights here and the height that you're pouring on the floor is the difference between this point here and the bottom of the ski. So we set it here for right in between a quarter inch and three eighths. We're just pulling it back. You want to overlap a little bit. Now what you don't want to do is pull because then you get an improper gauge on the floor, create a tidal wave. Just keep it nice, nice and steady. Keep pulling it back. We're on a big wide open span here, so you only want to pull so much. Because if you pull too far and say it's hot out, your, your wet edge is gonna to start to set up on you. And you're gonna be in a real hairy situation. Cleats are just as important of a tool because when you're doing shooter strip jobs or transition strips like this, any corner, anything, you can use your cleat. Once you get comfortable with the distance, as you can see it from up here, you can marry things pretty close. When we first started doing jobs with the transition strips everywhere, finished floors, it was nerve wracking, it was a pain, it was stressful because we had to marry every little bit all the way to the top. We said, how are we going to get better at this? How are we going to get better at this? Eventually, just doing enough of them, came right to us. So the most important thing doing a job of any kind of self-leveling is keeping a wet edge. So right now what we're trying to do is this is a very wide span. We're going to marry everything together and then continue the wet edge going back. So we're playing a little game of catch up over here, and then we're gonna keep bringing it back and back and back as we catch up with that line there. Contrary to video belief, I do know how to use these tools. I'm just, I'm just the guy behind the scenes pulling all the strings. You best get him on camera now. It's like trying to get Michelangelo to paint the Sistine Chapel again. Thank you. Go ahead, say it to my face. All right, so now you can see from here, this was, this was the hardest part of the floor. We had to marry three different areas together and now it's basically just a straight run at the finish line here. And I'm happy it is because it was getting a little tedious, a little stressful going back and forth. So that's it for this one. We're just finishing up the last bit right here. And uh, I think we poured about seven or eight pallets. I want to give a special shout out to our friends at Celtic, Mora, Ian, and Chad uh, with, with Dependable the Platform. We, we love the material. We love the customer service that you guys offer. Thank you for standing behind us. We really appreciate you. On to the next one.
dad to put my sweatshirt away nicely because I got hot before. And I was like, Dad, where is my sweatshirt? And he goes, all right, look over there, next to the ladder. It's right there. 